Hi, I'm Liz Dowling, the Chief People Officer here at BU, and today I'm going to be speaking with our very own Caroline England, who is a Product Marketing Director here. This is um, our Day in the Life series where we learn more about viewers, what they do, um, what they're up to, and what they love about working here. So um, let's jump right in. Hello, Caroline, how are you? Hello, I'm well, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so we'd love to hear all about um, your world. Um, what is your role at VIEW? So as you said, I am the Product Marketing Director here at VIEW. I joined in 2020 and I was the first product marketing hire. So I've created the function, which has been both terrifying and exhilarating <laughs> in equal measure. Um, and from there, we've grown to a compact but incredibly effective team of three. So we work on um, projects like making our whole organization more product led. And so we're working with you and the people team at the moment to revamp our new starter onboarding and current employee continuous learning program. And we're creating an, a more accessible product knowledge learning suite for all viewers with the aim of enhancing their product knowledge, really, um, no matter which, which department you work in or how closely or not you work with our product, we really want everyone to be really comfortable with the view product and be able to tell the story around it. Um, and as we've built out new features, and you know, views changed incredibly since I first joined, uh, we've built out new features like our proprietary ad serving and intelligence tools. The view proposition has changed. And so it's my team's job to make sure the way we talk about our products and position not only makes sense for our um, current and prospective clients, but for everyone in the business to be able to tell our story. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We're going to talk a little bit more in a bit about also what you've done in terms of bringing that product marketing-esque vibe to the rest of the business. Um, so what attracted you to VIEW? Um, I've always had a real soft spot for out of home. So my career began at Clear Channel Outdoor UK um, and I've always loved out of home as a medium. It's really bold, it's really positive, it's very creative. Uh, and I've worked sort of most of my career in the advertising world from sort of newspapers all the way through to online. And so the focus I've had on programmatic ad tech in particular meant that when the opportunity came to you know, combine out of home with ad tech, I jumped at the chance. Um, I was really lucky to be referred by a friend who just moved to view. Um, so he heard of the role, um, got in touch with me and you know, I knew him recommending it would mean it would be a good place to work. Um, and I just loved the idea of being involved in building that product narrative from the ground up in a relatively new company. Uh, and the view vision was just really exciting. Um, and I, you know, I always have the utmost respect for a company that puts product marketing sort of in at the, at the yeah. early stages to help build that narrative. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, you continue to hire throughout a crazy pandemic. And there were so many hurdles in the way of yeah. you being able to grow, but grow you did. And I'm really glad to be a part of that. Yeah, and we, yeah, we're delighted um, that, to have you here because obviously you've uh, you've had a little break. You've been off and had a little one. I have, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that. How was it, kind of? I guess going off and <laughs> coming back, etc. In like craziness of like pandemic. Yeah, I mean, was, this was baby number two, so I'd sort of had a had a maternity leave experience before that wasn't necessarily the best, and mm. you know, so there's never really great time in your career to think oh I'm going to step back from my role for sort of up to a year um yeah. but it was it felt like a really safe place to do that and I felt really supported all the way through both my pregnancy my maternity leave and then my return to work so I, I don't think it could have gone any better actually I you know I was a little bit jaded after my first experience so it was you know it was really nice to be supported and make choices about how I returned and it's hard it's hard coming back when you've been away um you know you you're changing roles from something very very different back into something that you you know had stepped away from yeah it's tech everything changes really fast <laughs> yeah so everyone you know was there were a lot of yeah. new faces when I came back um yeah. and I'd say that the support I had from view doing a kind of staggered return to work to mm -hmm. get my head back in the game get Nina sort of settled at nursery and just make sure that transition was smooth for both yeah. of us was really appreciated yeah Good stuff. And um, how, because obviously the business doubled in size in the time that you were how did you, like, I guess, like, relearn all about, well, not only the business, but also on that, like, being like, product marketing, you need to have all that knowledge at your fingertips and tripping off your tongue. How did you kind of get up to date with that? Um, well, I was really lucky that my team had held the fort in a really good way while I was away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
I didn't feel like I had to come back in and fix lots of stuff, which I think is a, a fear when, when you spent some time away. Um, but I essentially had to swallow my pride and re-onboard. Um, so I, I went, you know, acted like I was a new person again and, and attended sessions where I didn't necessarily have to, but I wanted to yeah. be a part of those conversations again and, and just kind of lurk in meetings and, and absorb and, you know, not try and get ahead of myself. I think, I think that's a mistake people make or fear that you know they should be able to just leap straight back in and mm. you've got you've got to give give yourself time to adjust yeah. and, and relearn because things change people change processes change and yeah, yeah being patient is the uh <laughs> my words of advice for anyone coming back in no, see and um tell, share with us a little bit about um these matern or should i say primary caregiver program <laughs> well again just really really wonderful to see a company support people during this period because it it is really hard it's really hard um you you feel like you know financially it's going to be difficult emotionally it's going to be difficult you know career-wise it's going to be difficult so anything that gets put in place to make someone feel valued reassured um supported is is only ever a good thing and I just think as well you know the way to attract talent is to make sure that the environment is good, the culture is good and people feel safe and secure. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's particularly hard for women to mm. step out and feel like, you know, their career is not going to be detrimentally affected by having a, having a kid. So yeah. I think, I think leveling up that approach and making sure that it doesn't always have to be the woman who takes leave. You know, there is, there is a fair share, you know, it takes, takes two people to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, there should be that opportunity for for both parents to experience what it's like to be be a caregiver because it's both wonderfully rewarding and incredibly difficult in equal measure. So, mm. um, yeah, anything that encourages that balance um, in the, the world of work is a plus for me. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also a plus for the wider society and well, because we really, um, as Helen, who's our um, DEI and I sponsor says that anything that we can do in our industry or in our world, you know, has a has a wider impact. And um, outside of and that, what are the um, I guess the, the areas of, of you that you you love the most in terms of well, the employee experience? I know that you've just um, on our um, coach house program. Yeah, I think there's just so much opportunity to grow, not just in your kind of day to day at view. Um, so I'm really lucky that, you know, you don't just hit a certain level and then, you know, the opportunities aren't afforded to you to, to grow and improve. You know, I, I manage people, I manage a function and I always want to be better. So being given those opportunities to spend time working on, you know, my own skills, my leadership skills, um, you know, growing as a manager, making sure that I'm, you know, fulfilled in my career as well as helping other people's. Um, is really important to me and you know, a lot of a lot of places you'll find that that has to happen in your own, under your own steam and in your own time yeah. whereas you know I, I appreciate that view sort of really puts that in front of us and, and says here it is let, let's let's go um, and the fact that we have you know time carved out on Friday afternoons that we can spend on our own growth is really great because otherwise you know that that sort of hustle mentality can creep in really really quickly and <laughs> yeah, wall to wall meetings and you know nobody takes time to have a breather and just say right what what do I need to work on because mm-hmm. we're all a work in progress um no matter how high up or low down you might be and in, in your mm-hmm. career is it the beginning is it you know are you further in there's always opportunity to learn more and be better absolutely yeah never stop learning um and you've been um like key part in building um our workplace architecture um being part of collab um do you want to share a little bit about collab yeah so i'm i'm part of a, a team called collab which is sort of the cross departmental sort of senior manager level group and we we act as a sort of extension of the leadership team and we help sort of roll out various initiatives um that the company are are putting in place um, and we also feed back what viewers are kind of talking about and they, they want the leadership team to fo- consider or focus on. Um, and that's really key to have that almost like a mediation layer between, you know, all mm-hmm. the employees and the leadership team and, and just make sure that everyone has that kind of voice at the, at the table. Um, so having someone repping from each each department is really key because the way people work is very different department yeah. to department. Um, 
you know, we have to work together to make sure we keep building that empathy and transparency in the way we collaborate, especially as we've grown so fast. Um, you know, collaboration and communication is easy when you're a small company. Yeah. As you expand, it gets more and more difficult. And especially with our hybrid setup as well, you know, yeah. there's lots of different ways yeah. of working. There's lots of different needs from people, yeah. and the way they work. So that team's really key is, uh, to making making sure everyone's voices are heard and, and that yeah. information goes both up and down the company mm-hmm. and, and everybody knows what everybody needs. And it's great. So, you know, I spent the first year of you remote working because it was still locked down. <laughs> two, three, I can't remember. We had which no one. choice, Caroline, did we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was on maternity leave for a period. So, you know, I'm making up for lost time as well, spending time with my peers in, the, in those in those um, sessions. Yes. Well. It's, yeah. it's really useful for, for me and for the company. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Because our hybrid model is a minimum of 20% together with your team over the quarter based on your goals. But you are um, one of the viewers that's in most regularly. Is that because you feel like you're making up for lost time or is it because actually you're so pleased that you want to get away from the babies? <laughs> bit, <laughs> of both, <laughs> really. bit of both. Um, yeah. You know, I, I really love this this setup that we have. You know, obviously, pre-pandemic, I'd never really worked from home. I'd worked for a lot yeah. of places that didn't necessarily, like, encourage it or believe in it. And yeah. you know, so, obviously, got plunged into that. It changed the way people worked. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 lonely being at home all the time. I'm, I'm definitely a kind of people person. I like being around everyone. Yeah. So I spend two days a week in the office and three days working from home. It works really well for our family um, because, you know, let's face it, society is not set up for two working parents. And, you know, yeah. school finishes at 3.15 and other yeah. <laughs> pick up at different times. So, you know, I don't know how we do it without this hybrid mm-hmm. approach. I don't understand how people do do it when they've got really rigid in-office hours. Um, yeah. My days at home allow me to kind of have a deeper focus on creative work but then, you know, my days in the office mean I'm, you know, building the relationships that are really important, especially as a product marketer, because I work across so many departments. But you also sort of learn by osmosis. I, you know, I'm hearing conversations going on, like there are different topics being talked about and you can kind of pitch in and ask questions mm-hmm. without having to necessarily schedule a call with someone or, yeah. you know, you can drop by someone's desk and just ask them a quick, you know, two minute question mm-hmm. rather than having to find time in people's busy diaries. Yeah. So I just think, you know, the the blend of both is really is really good it it certainly works for me I know it doesn't necessarily you know apply to everyone's roles there are lots of different Mm -hmm. types of roles and you know I think we're we're all finding our our groove and you know being part of Lab definitely helps communicate that sort of up and down the business as to what people need definitely and that's also you know about it being you know enabling people to work from where is best suited to the work that they're doing at that point in time but also to the way that they're you know suits their style yeah that's it so Carol like, quick tip what's your number one top tip if someone was coming to for an interview at View um what I really love about View is we have this massive range of personality types cultural backgrounds diverse ways of thinking diverse ways of learning so I I'd say don't don't censor yourself I'm you know if you get an interview here we don't just look at what's on your cv your background we don't we're not just looking for sort of lookalike work robots who will do the same thing as everyone else yeah. <laughs> we, we look for people who are interesting and we want to know who you are and what makes you tick so i'd yeah. say you know don't censor yourself be your truest self because it might just be that that is exactly what we're looking for um yeah. so that would be my my tip brilliant brilliant i love that if there were work robots we'd already have them wouldn't we so <laughs> awesome so and thank you um so much caroline um for your time today but also for everything that you do and um all of the energy that you invest in making you a great place to work thank you if you would like to join um myself and caroline at view and please check out our um all of our open roles on www.view.com and forward slash careers or alternatively drop an email to talent at view.com and we will be right back in touch with you as soon as we've got something suitable